Transformations between objects can be done using keyed physics. Keyed physics is a powerful tool for controlling particle systems in Blender. It's especially nice for moving particles between two similar particle systems. That's because when the particle systems are similar enough, the order in which the particles appear, disappear, and move are equivalent. Examples of transforming between two similar particle systems include this animation of an object transforming into a smaller version of itself, or this animation of an object transforming into a version with a different material, or this animation of an object moving from one location to another. I'll show you how to do all of these. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.81a. We'll start with an object transforming into a smaller version of itself. I'm going to use a torus for the object. I'll name it Torus Start because this is what we'll see at the start of the animation. We're going to break this object apart into small particles, so we need to give it more geometry. So add a subdivision surface modifier. Set the render and viewport values to 3. This value shows us the number of faces for all of the objects in our scene. Since this torus is the only object in the scene, this is the number of faces that the torus has with this level of subdivision. So I'm going to break this object apart into 36,000 particles. To do that, with the torus selected, from the object menu select Quick Effects and then Quick Explode. This adds a particle system and an explode modifier. Now switch to the particle tab and change the number of particles to 36,000. I'm going to make the torus break apart from frames 10 to 110. Since the frame start value can't be larger than the frame end value, set the end value first. Leave the lifetime value at 50 for now. Now open the Velocity section and set the Normal value to 0. And also set the Randomize value to 0. This will prevent the particles from moving away from the object. Now open the Field Weight section and set the Gravity value to 0. This will prevent the particles from falling down. If I were to play the animation now, then none of the particles would move. So let's add a Turbulence Force Field to make them move. So press Shift A and select Force Field, and then Turbulence. In the Physics tab, you can set the Strength value. I think that a value of 0.5 works well. Next, we're going to set this up so that the torus comes apart from left to right. We'll do that by adding a Blend texture to the particle system. So select the torus. At the bottom of the Particles tab, open the Texture section and click the New button. Then switch to the Texture tab and set the Type to Blend. To gain a little more control over this, open the Colors section and add a check mark next to Color Ramp. Now if you open the Color Ramp section, you can customize it. If you want to reverse the direction, then click this down arrow and select Flip Color Ramp. I'm going to leave it the way it is so that the torus will come apart from the left to the right. Now let's see how this is looking so far. So I'll select the torus and switch to the Modifier tab. Then I'll click this button to refresh the modifier data. Next I'll click the Overlays button to get a cleaner look. Now when I press the Play button, the torus will come apart from left to right. I'll speed up the video for this. The lifetime of the particles is set to 50 frames, so once a particle starts to move, it will disappear 50 frames later. We're going to be adding a second smaller torus whose particles will appear at the same time and same place that these particles disappear. This is possible because the particle systems of the two objects will be similar enough. I'll set the frame number back to 1 and re-enable the overlays. Now we need to make a change to the material, so switch to the shading workspace. These five nodes were automatically added when we selected Quick Explode. They'll interfere with what we're doing, so delete them. Then connect the principled shader to the surface input of the material output node. Now I'll switch back to the layout workspace. 
Now we're ready to add the second object that this object will turn into. We'll start by duplicating this object. So press Shift D and then right click to place the duplicate in the same location as the original. Then rename the duplicate Taurus Finish because this is what we'll see at the end of the animation. In this animation, the Taurus is going to transform into a smaller version of itself. So I'll scale this down in size by pressing S, then 0.5, then Enter. Now we need to make some changes to the particle system, so switch to the Particles tab. Since this is a copy of the larger Taurus, it's using the same particle system. So we need to make a copy of this particle system before making any changes to prevent the changes from also being applied to the large Taurus. This number 2 shows how many objects are using this particle system. Click it to make a copy for this small torus. Now scroll down and open the physics section. Change the physics type to keyed. Keyed particles let us control the path of the particles between two or more particle systems. We're going to set this up so that the particles of the small torus start at the location where the large torus particles disappear. Then the particles will travel to the small torus. To do that, Open the Relations section and click the plus button. For the target object, select Torus Start. Then click the plus button again and for the target object, select Torus Finish. Now scroll up to the Emission section. These are the values that we used for the large torus. Since the first particles start at frame 10 and have a lifetime of 50, they will start to disappear at frame 60. This is where we want the small torus particles to start appearing, so set the frame start value to 60. The last large torus particles appear at frame 110 and disappear 50 frames later at frame 160. This is where we want the small torus particles to finish appearing, so set the end value to 160. Leave the lifetime value set to 50. Now with the end value set to 160 and the lifetime set to 50, the particles will be done moving at frame 210. So I'm going to set the end of the animation to be frame 220. Next, switch to the modifier tab so that we can control the visibility of the particles. Checking unborn will make the particles visible before they start moving. Checking alive will make them visible while they are moving. And checking dead will make them visible after they stop moving. We don't want the particles of the small torus to be visible before they start moving, so uncheck Unborn. We do want them to be visible while they are moving and after they stop moving, so make sure both alive and dead are checked. I'm also going to remove the check mark from next to Cut Edges, which will speed things up. Now select the large torus. I'll uncheck Cut Edges for this also. For the large torus, we want the particles to be visible before they start moving and while they are moving, so these check marks are OK. We're about ready to play the animation to see what it looks like, but first it's a good idea to click the Refresh button to refresh the modifier data. I'll also select the other torus object and click the Refresh button for that one as well. Next, I'll click the Overlays button to get a cleaner look, and then I'll press Play. I'll speed up the video for this part. This looks good, but we do have a problem. If I were to render the animation now, it would look like this, which is not what we saw when I just played the animation. I don't know whether this is a bug in the software or just how the software works, but I'll show you a workaround. I'll set the frame number back to 1, re-enable the overlays, select the large torus, and switch to the particles tab. If I were to change the lifetime of the particles to 220 to match the length of the animation, then the keyed particles will look good. But when I do this, the large torus particles will stay visible for the whole animation. So my workaround is to use two copies of the large torus. One copy will be invisible and will work with the keyed particles of the small torus. The other copy will be visible and independent of the keyed particles. To do this, Make sure the large torus is selected, press Shift D to duplicate, and then right click to place the duplicate in the same location as the original. Name this new copy Torus Visible. Then make sure Torus Visible is selected. 
We need to make a copy of this particle system to prevent changes from being applied to the other torus, so click this number 2 button. Now set the lifetime back to 50. This is the torus that will be visible. Next, select Torus Start and make sure the lifetime value is set to 220. This is the invisible torus that will work with the keyed particles. To make it invisible, switch to the Modifier tab and remove the check marks from next to Unborn and Alive. Next, I'll click the Refresh button for all three torus objects. Now when I render the animation, it looks like this. This is looking good. By the way, for the renders, I'm using the Cycles Render Engine with 25 render samples. If you don't know how to render an animation, you can watch my video on that topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Now let's make a version where the material changes instead of the size. So move the timeline near the end of the animation so that we can see the small torus and select it if it's not already selected. Now we'll restore it to its original size, so press S, then 2, then Enter. Now switch to the Material tab. We need to make a copy of this material to prevent the changes from being applied to the other objects, so press the 3 button. Now I'm going to change the color. Now I'll set the timeline to frame 1 and click the Refresh button for all three torus objects. This is what the rendered animation looks like. Now let's make one more version where the location of the torus changes. So move the timeline near the end of the animation so that we can see the finished torus and select it. Then I'll switch to the Material tab, click here, and select the blue material. Now I'll move the torus on the x-axis by pressing G, then X, then minus 3, then Enter. For this animation, the particles will have a longer distance to travel, so I'm going to give them more time to move. So I'll switch to the Particle tab and increase the lifetime to 100. Now the last particles will start to move at frame 160 and continue moving for 100 frames, bringing us to frame 260. So I'll set the end of the animation to 270. Next, I'll set the timeline to frame 1 and click the Refresh button for all three torus objects. This is what the rendered animation looks like. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.